So my name is Karim. Um, I'm half Egyptian, half Spanish. My mother is Spanish. I've lived in Egypt most of my life, and I study masters in politics in Newcastle. As uh, just so we know each other. Um, <laughs> so basically, the revolution in Egypt. If you've been watching the news, the, the key word here is unprecedented. Who would have? I mean, this never happened before. Who would have possibly expected that two million people? who go to the streets and oppose a tyrant, a, a Mubarak himself, I like to call him the Pharaoh. <laughs> you, you cannot overthrow Mubarak, he is the legend, really. And, and, and ask for the rights and demand for, for, for freedom, for justice, for democracy, for what truly belongs to us as Egyptians, as human beings. That never happened before. So that's a very important thing to be noticing. Um, so, um, what I have in mind right now is, first of all, to talk about what actually led to the revolution. That's important for us to be aware of. Some of the things I was actually wasn't aware of myself until last week. Also, to be talking about a, li a little bit about the revolution itself. What happened during the revolution? Some things that we don't see in the news. Really important, huh? <clears throat> and also, later on, be talking about the future of the revolution. What are we expecting as the results of, of, of this mass movement? What are, the other wor what are the other players in the world gonna be doing? I know we're gonna be talking about imperialism and all that. What are the imperialist countries gonna be doing? What are the United States is gonna be doing? Is this, are they gonna fill this political vacuum themselves? Are they gonna coach influence? You know, that's something we, we need to think about. So let's start at, let's talk about a quick history about Mubarak's plans to monopolize the country. Basically, um, a lot of moves were done by Mubarak. But he, one of the strategic moves he did, he appointed a man called Safwat al-Sharif. This man, he was previously a corrupt intelligence officer. He appointed this man to be the minister, I think it's of media or mass communication. What do you call it? I think it's the minister, minister of media. And at the same time, this man was also the leader of the National Democratic Party basically the country, the, the, the party dominating, ruling the country. The reason I'm saying this is because throughout the, the, the idea of, of having someone controlling the media and knowing how to send the message to the people, you actually brainwash the people <coughs> completely. You completely just remove the idea of having any opposition any dislike to the figure of Mubarak because he is everywhere. Eventually the problem with, I'm, I'm gonna spare you from all the economic details and how the public sector factories were privatized wrongly and that the middle class disappeared and all that, de and all those de details. But we need to mention what is really important is that parallel to the control of the media, Mubarak built a very strong security system and infrastructure. You guys need to visualize what are we talking about. We're talking about 10% of the population, 8 million human beings involved some way or another in intelligence, policing, detaining. I mean, you don't have any rights in Egypt. You can't talk freely like how we are right now. I can't leave my beard. Like if I'm a Muslim and in, 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 in Egypt, I have friends in Egypt who got this friend of mine, he's a close friend, he, he, they went to this house in front of his mother and his father and they took him, they, 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 they searched everything, they took him, put him three days in jail, no questions asked, they put him in the dark room, they, they had him hear ki kids, like 16 year old kids and 17 year old kids being done, um, um, shocked with electricity and all that and he's like, you hearing that guy, that could happen to you talk, what are you affiliated with? And the game was completely innocent. This is, this, is, this is unfair. I mean, you need to understand what level of injustice we were living in Egypt. It's not like we see in the TV. It's not, it's not that simple. It's something beyond that. These Muslim people are not bad. They're not terrorists. They're just regular human beings. You know? So, important to, to relate to that is what actually led to the revolution? Besides all this suppression and all this limiting of the rights, it's a figure called Gamal Mubarak. 
Gamal Mubarak is the son of Muhammad Hosni Mubarak, the president, the pharaoh of Egypt. And this man, this guy, he was going to be president of Egypt. They were actually promoting the idea of being, him inheriting his rule. People started moving in masses. Well, not moving in masses. They didn't move in masses yet. They were really opposing it. I mean, how are we going to have a, the father's son? He's been there for 25 years. or I don't know how, how long was he in there in power. A long time. Exactly. 25 years in power. What kind of person is 25 years in power if he's not Franco or I don't know, like some of the dictator, you know? We're, we're not those days yet. It's twice and that's it. So, Gamal Mubarak, they were, they were trying to promote the idea of Gamal Mubarak being the new leader of the country. So, so Gamal Mubarak, I mean, <coughs> trying to introduce the idea of the son of a man who's been so unjust to be the next president, that started moving the, the people. Bit by bit, a lot of a activists started moving, a lot of um, political parties, but it was not getting anywhere until, and a, a very important, I need, I need to all to remember this name, this guy named Khalid Said. Alex Snowden told me this. The, 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 it's, I think it's the straw that breaks the camel's back is the right expression. That was it. That was it. This, this young guy in Alexandria <coughs> walking in the street and two not regular police informants or, or police officers or whatever come and ask, me, ask him, like typical in Egypt, we do this, like show me our identification, right? They start talking. They talk inappropriately. He talks back. They get him into an alley and they beat the shit out. I'm sorry I'm using this language, but this is true. They beat him to death. They just put him in a dally, an alley and they beat him to death. And after that, it's not only that, to clear themselves out of that, they, they <coughs> got some drugs and they put him in, a, in his mouth and they like forced to swallow him after he's being dead. So the, the argument is, this man was not killed by us. He was on drugs and he tried to swallow <coughs> the drugs, that's why he, go, he died choked. A website was created by a very important man and those of you who are in politics, a man called Wet Ronin. He's the marketing manager of Google Middle East. He created a page on Facebook called We Are All Khalid Zayed. This web page, with this face on Facebook, what he did actually, and this is really important for the revolution, is it grouped all the opposing figures to Mubarak in one sole place. It actually managed to get all those people who didn't have a voice to get through Facebook and to be talking about all the injustices and start planning things. And at the end, they managed to plan. <coughs> they, they, they did this really strategically. They planned on the 25th of January, which, by the way, is the National Police Day in Egypt. Mm -hmm. OK? They wanted to humiliate them. They wanted to prove their, their, their utmost rejection to what's been going on. In that day, 25th of January, in unison, one voice, go to the streets and call <coughs> for rights. It's human beings. We're not talking about, I want AC in my office. I'm talking about rights, basic rights, human rights, you know, freedom of speech, democracy. I want to run my country. <coughs> so this is when the revolution started, basically, the 25th of January. <coughs> I think all of us followed the, the revolution very well, so I don't need to give you the details about what, the, what have been happening, the revolution and all that. But knowing what led to the revolution is critical. Then we saw how it escalated and, and everything, but it's something to, important, to, to note important that, that the government, they got thugs and prisoners out of the prisons. And I think it was on the 28th, it was the, 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 the Friday of Rage. They call it Friday of Rage, 28th of January. We got all these thugs in the streets. Those were the pro Mubarak forces and NDP. And when you saw these cocktail Molotovs and all that, those weren't regular civilians. Those were people <coughs> got in on purpose from different parts of the country to, co to, to divide these protesters. And what the government did also, a, a mask, uh, 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 a very a, a strategic thing they did is that, and a very stupid thing indeed, 
is that they block all communication. <coughs> the website, the internet, telecommunications all went down. Try to divide the protesters, try to make communication and, and, and coordination impossible. But what this did was made people curious. I can't talk and I heard that there's a demonstration. What am I going to do? Hit the streets all over the country, unanimously. That's where you see the masses. That's why, because when you, when you try to choke someone, you're not going to get anything out of them other than resistance. That's the truth. Um, so to, 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 to sum up, changes after the revolution. Because we all know about the Battle of the Camel, right? Called that famous camels, made history. Um, changes after the revolution. What we have seen in Egypt, <coughs> and, and it's, it's different from all Arab revolutions. This is very unique, that the army was the side of the people. The army was actually fed up. This is the difference between, for example, Libya. It's a nightmare over there. It's tribal, right? But in Egypt, you have the army supporting the people. That's what made it possible. Um, a lot of political parties were established after the revolution. I was in Egypt two weeks ago, and I can tell you this. People are aware as they weren't before, and we have very high levels of ignorance in Egypt. <coughs> I was talking to a chef, and he was talking about me, uh, lecturing me about how politics and how the, the election system works and about the, the parliament and all that, you know? Come on, man. I mean, this, is, this never happened before. People didn't care about politics. We have 25% illiteracy rates. This explains something you guys are gonna be asking. Sectarian violence, why is there a Christian-Muslim divide? I know someone's gonna ask that. <laughs> <laughs> so, just to sum up, I think what we have all learned here is that <coughs> if you believe in it, you can do it, truly. And there is no, sky is the limit. And just to market my country, we inspire people. So I guess, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, that was stupid to say. But I mean, I'm just saying, <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, it's in the sense that, in the sense that, come on, man, we were in different, difficult, very difficult situation there. And we made it on ourselves. I mean, all of us are aspirations. Socialist Party having aspirations. Um, Stop the War Coalition have aspirations. <coughs> we can all do this. We can definitely do this. Thank you, guys.